So my wife requested a couple floating shelves be mounted above her dresser in our bedroom. She just wants them to be very simple, uh, painted to match the baseboards and crown and that stuff, which is a color called Swiss Coffee, which is actually just a fancy name for white, as far as I'm concerned. That's what I'm going to do. Today I'm going to build a couple shelves, get them painted up, and get them mounted to the wall. Now I've made a bunch of floating shelves. I've made them out of hardwood and stained them. I've made them out of old fence pickets to give it kind of a rustic look. The ones I'm building today are just going to be painted, so I'm going to build them out of MDF. What's great about MDF is it's very smooth and flat, and it takes paint very well. It's also extremely stable, so I'll have no worries about these shelves ever buckling or twisting or bowing or anything like that. I'm going to build two shelves, three feet long, eight inches deep. I'm going to show you how I build those shelves, and I'm also going to show you how I attach floating shelves to the wall. I believe this is a project that just about anyone can do, so stick around and let's get it done. So I bought a whole 4x8 sheet of MDF for this, but I really only need about half of this. So I'm going to start by breaking this piece down into smaller, more manageable pieces. So for my two 3 foot long, 8 inch deep shelves, I'm going to cut 4 strips out of this that are 8 and a quarter inches wide. Those 4 pieces will give me the top and bottom and the sides of both of my shelves. And then I'll cut a couple narrower pieces out that will be the front of the shelves. Now I'm going to use my track saw to make these cuts, but this can be done with a circular saw or even a jigsaw. You just clamp a straight edge to your workpiece and make your cut. These cuts can even be done on a table saw, but this piece of wood, it's a little kind of big and heavy and cumbersome to make those cuts by yourself. It can be done. I've done it before, but I just think it's a little easier and safer to do it with something like a track saw or a circular saw. So I have my four pieces cut that will become my top, bottom, and sides. I'm going to cut one more piece off of this that will be the front pieces of my shelves and then I'll rip it in half on my table saw. And that hose I had plugged in for dust collection is kind of an offshoot of my table saw dust collection so it's not really getting the full power of my dust collector. And I wasn't really happy with how much dust that the saw was kicking up in the air. So I plug the hose from my Festool dust extractor into this saw and I'm going to see if that does any better. It's a direct line right to the dust extractor. It's a lot more powerful so I think it's going to perform a lot better. So I don't know if you could tell there but that Festool dust extractor did collect the dust on that track saw a little bit better. I think that's just the nature of cutting MDF. The sawdust it creates is really more like a fine powder than a regular sawdust. When I've used that track saw to cut solid wood or plywood, the dust collection on it works much better. Cutting MDF is just kind of nasty business and I really probably should be wearing a dust mask when I do that. Maybe all the time in the shop, but you know, it is what it is. So I have those pieces cut to their rough size and moving on to the support brackets. I have these two scraps of pine. These are from an old bed frame that was torn apart. And I'm going to use these to support the shelves. So I'll just go ahead and mill these up to the size I need. So these pieces of wood will mount to the wall and then the shelf will, is like a sleeve. It'll slide over this and this will support it. So I went in the house and I laid out exactly where I wanted my shelves. I found two studs per shelf that I could mount this bracket to. And I like to use these big screws to mount these, which means I have to drill a hole to accommodate the screw and then counter bore to accommodate the head. And I'm going to do that over at the drill press. So 
So now that these mounting blocks are done, it's time to finish the shelves. So the back edge of each shelf, the edge that's going against the wall, will remain flat. But all the other edges will get 45s. And when those miters are all glued together, it'll leave some nice clean seams. And it'll look really nice when it's all painted up. And I'll make the end pieces and the front. So when this is all assembled, the gap between the inside of the top and the bottom will be an inch and three eighths which is the same thickness as my mounting block. I want a nice tight fit between my shelf and my mounting block, which will help eliminate any sagging. So first I'll get all these pieces cut to their final dimensions, then we'll cut some miters, and then it's on to assembly. First I square up one end using my dubby sled. Then after setting my stop block to 36 inches, I cut everything to length. Sometimes it's quicker and easier to use your actual material to measure than it is to use a tape measure or a ruler. I know that using two sheets of MDF and my support bracket material to set the distance between my blade and my fence will give me the perfect width for my front and side pieces. Now I just have to rip two fronts and four sides. And once I had everything set and my test cuts looked good, I started cutting these edges off at 45 degrees. Then I reset for the thinner front and side pieces. The only difference is the piece that's going on the front of the shelf gets a 45 on all four edges. And then once you got everything cut, it's a pretty straightforward glue up from here. Another reason to make this so this fits in here really tight is you can use it as a spacer. Just set that in there. And then this piece, once you get glue on here, you just set it right in, line it up, and it'll support this piece. This can be a bit of a tricky glue up. There's a lot to do fairly quickly. Probably a good idea to have your clamps set up before you start getting into this. The clamps are pretty good about pulling everything where it needs to be. All, right, all the seams look pretty good. I think that'll work. I think I want one more right here. So all these joints look pretty good. I'm getting good squeeze out everywhere. But remember, this is getting painted. So if there's a little gap here or there, I can throw a little wood filler in there, paint over it, and you'll never even see it. So I'll set this aside and glue up the other one.
So the glue up went well, all the seams look really nice. Now I just have to hit this with the scraper, do some sanding on it, and get this cleaned up and ready for paint. You can save yourself some of this work by using a wet rag to wipe this glue off as it's squeezing out. I had a lot of clamps in the way, so I just let it run out and I'm just gonna clean it up now. So I'm gonna throw on some hearing protection, put some music on, and I'll be back with you when this is ready for paint. Mounting these shelves is pretty simple. I just lay out on the wall generally where I want the shelf. Then I locate a couple studs that I could attach my mounting blocks to. Then I transfer the position of those studs to my mounting blocks. I pre-drill those holes we looked at earlier. And now I just screw them to the wall. You may have noticed that that second screw missed the stud. When I measure these out, I just kind of assumed that my studs would be 16 inches on center. Turns out these two studs are only 15 inches apart. So I had to go back and drill a new hole for the second screw. No big deal really, but it's just a good reminder to never assume anything. As you can see, those are a really tight fit and they're probably going to stay in place. But I generally throw a screw in from the top down through the shelf into the mounting bracket and that's really going to hold it in place. So there we go. The floating shelves are done. If this is a project you've been wanting to tackle, I say go for it. It's fairly simple and I think it's a project just about anybody could handle. As you saw, having lots of clamps on hand is very useful for pulling everything square into place and tightening up all those joints. But if you don't have a lot of clamps, remember you can always just glue that main box together. And then once that's dry, you can attach the front piece on in a separate glue up. One thing I think I could have done better or maybe could have gone easier was painting the shelves. My daughter wants a few of these floating shelves in her bedroom. I have a cabinet that needs to go in my hall bath and all that needs to be painted. I have a new tool coming that should make painting projects quicker, easier, and produce better results. So stay tuned for a review of that tool coming soon. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you get notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.